Hello, this is Chaplain Bob Walker. Didn't think you could get rid of me that easy, huh? All right. Isaiah chapter 65. Turn your King James Bible there. Verse 1. The Lord says, I am sought of them that asked not for me. Hmm. I am sought of them that ask not for me. I am found of them that sought me not. I said, Behold me, behold me unto a nation that was not called by my name. So, how do we explain that? Let's take a look. Now, those of you that listen to me for a while, this is some of this is going to be, you know, repeated, but I don't know if somebody's listened to me for a couple of years or if they're a brand new first time listener. So please bear with me. Turn your Bible to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 3. Who's this people that sought the Lord that you know, basically didn't know him. I mean, you know, it's... So, you know, in Isaiah 65, it said, I am, I am sought of them that asked not for me. I am found of them that sought me not. I said, Behold me, behold me, unto a nation that was not called by my name. Well, what nation is that? Jeremiah 3, verse chapter 3, and verse 8 gives you the answer. But we're going to read the entire book of Jeremiah, chapter 3. Verse 1, they say, if a man put away his wife, and she go from him, and become another man's, shall he return unto her again? And the answer is no. And shall not that land be greatly polluted? Thou hast played the harlot, that's a whore, but thou hast played the harlot with many lovers, yet return again unto, uh, yet return again to me, saith the Lord. Now who is he talking to? Israel, right? Verse 2, lift up thine eyes unto the high places and see where thou hast not been lying with. In the ways hast thou sat for them as the Arabian in the wilderness, and thou hast polluted the land with thy whoredoms and with thy wickedness. Therefore the showers have been withholden. And it's talking about the rain, right? And there hath been no latter rain, and thou hast a whore's forehead. Thou refusest to be ashamed. Wilt thou not from this time cry unto me, My father, thou art the guide of my youth? Will he reserve his anger forever? Will he keep it to the end? Behold, thou hast spoken and done evil things as thou couldst. The Lord also said unto me in the days of Josiah the king. Now, Josiah was a good king. Hast thou seen that which backsliding Israel hath done? She has gone up upon every high mountain and upon every green tree, and there hath played the harlot, a whore, a spiritual whore. They've served Satan and his devils, not the Lord. That's what they're doing up in the high mountains and under every green tree. The witches consider trees sacred. That's why they have their little witch ceremonies among trees. All right. And uh, why are they up on the high mountains? Because they're trying to build a stairway to heaven. Verse 7. And I said, after she had done all these things, turn thou unto me, but she returned not, and her treacherous sister Judah saw it. So here it is. Israel and Judah are sisters. They're not necessarily the same people. Now listen carefully. And I saw when for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery, spiritual adultery, I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce. God divorced Israel. Yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not, but went and played the harlot also. So God divorced Israel. Because he was fed up with their wickedness and their spiritual adultery. I mean, after all, the marriage supper of the Lamb, isn't that the marriage, the marriage of Christ with Israel? 
Absolutely. That's what God likens, you know, the church to be, the bride of Christ, you know. Verse 8. And it came to pass through the lightness of her whoredom that she defiled the land and committed adultery with stones and with stocks. Idol worship, people. And yet for all this, her treacherous sister Judah hath not turned unto me with her whole heart, but feignedly, saith the Lord. Do you know what a, a feignedly means? It means you trick somebody. You know, you, you uh, like in an army battle maneuver, you pretend like you're going to go to the right, but you go to the left to attack the enemy from a different side. Or football, I mean, or, you know, you pretend like you're going to pass, but you run the ball. Girls, if you don't understand, ask ask any guy. Ask your brother, husband, boyfriend, you know. They'll explain it to you. But that's what Judah did. She was putting on an act, a show, just like the Oscars, right? All right. And the Lord said unto me, the backsliding Israel, now this is who God divorced, the backsliding Israel hath justified herself more than treacherous Judah. Can you believe that? God divorced Israel for their unfaithfulness, but they justified themselves more than Judah did. Go and proclaim these words toward the north. The north. What's north of Israel? Europe. Go and proclaim these words toward the north and say, Return thou backsliding Israel, saith the Lord, and I will not cause mine anger to fall upon you, for I am merciful, saith the Lord, and will not keep anger forever. Now think about it, people. What group of people, what race of people have printed Bibles, built churches, and at times in history been predominantly Christian? Not Africa. Let's skip that. At least not Central Africa. Maybe North Africa. Parts of it. I mean, let's face it. North Africa is Muslim. Central Africa is, you know, into voodoo and stuff. South America? Latin America? No. Japan? No. China? No. Asia? No. India? No. What race and group of people have been believe the Bible, printed the Bible, built churches, white Christian Europeans, the land of the north. Tell that to the black Hebrews. Okay? Oh, let's see. All right. Let's go. Verse 12 again. Go and proclaim these words toward the north. And say, Return, thou backsliding Israel, saith the Lord, and I will not cause mine anger to fall upon you, for I am merciful, saith the Lord, and I will not keep anger forever. Only acknowledge thine iniquity. Yeah, God wants us to tell, acknowledge for us to admit our sins and wickedness and evil. Only acknowledge thine iniquity that thou hast transgressed against the Lord thy God and hast scattered thy ways to the strangers under every green tree, and ye have not obeyed my voice, saith the Lord. Turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord, for I am married unto you, and I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion, and I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding." Well, don't be looking on TBN because you're not going to find those pastors. And it shall come to pass when ye be multiplied and increased in the land in those days, saith the Lord, they shall say no more the ark of the covenant of the Lord, neither shall it come to mind, neither shall they remember it, neither shall they visit it, neither shall that be done any more. At the time they shall call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord. And all the nations shall be gathered unto it to the name of the Lord to Jerusalem, neither shall they walk any more after the imagination of their evil heart. Listen carefully. In those days shall the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel. They're not the same people. 
How can the house of Ju Judah walk with the house of Israel if they're the same people? See, God divorced Israel, but not Judah. In those days, the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel, and they shall come together out of the land of the north to the land that I have given for an inheritance unto your fathers. Europe is north of Europe, of Israel, people. But I say, how shall I... How shall I put thee among the children, and give thee a pleasant land, a goodly heritage of the host of nations? And I said, Thou shalt call me my father, and shalt, and shalt not turn away from me. Surely as a treacherous wife departeth from her husband, so have ye dealt treacherously with me, O house of Israel, saith the Lord. That's why God divorced him, right? A voice, a voice was heard upon the high places, weeping and supplication, of the children of Israel, for they have perverted their way and have forgotten the Lord their God. And that's why the whites are being exterminated in South Africa. Because they have forgotten their Lord. They have forgotten the Boer prophet. They have forgotten the battle of Blood River and the promise they made, made to the Lord when they were given victory over the Zulus, the Dutch, The Dutch slaughtered tens of thousands of Zulus, a handful of them. The river ran red with their blood. That's why they called it the Battle of Blood River. The white Dutch Christians slaughtered tens of thousands, from what I understand, of Zulus. And when they were done, they were amazed they said, we didn't even bring enough gunpowder and ammunition to be able to kill this many. But their, their bullets never ran out. Their gunpowder never ran out. It's as if the Lord just kept refilling it the, as it was used. You know, people, when you make a covenant promise with the Lord, you should keep it. Verse 22, Return ye backsliding children, and I will heal your backslidings. Behold, we come unto thee, for thou art the Lord our God. Truly in vain is salvation hoped for from the hills and from the multitude of the mountains. Truly in the Lord our God is the salvation of Israel. For shame hath devoured the labor of our fathers from our youth, their flocks and their herds, their sons and their daughters. We lie down in our shame, and our confusion covereth us. For we have sinned against the Lord our God. We and our fathers from our youth, even unto this day, and have not obeyed the voice of the Lord our God. All right, let's go to the book of Hosea, H-O-S-E-A, chapter 1. The word of the Lord that came unto Hosea, the son of Beri, in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel. Did you catch that? kings of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel. See, Israel had a king, and Judah had a king. They're not the same people. The beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea, and the Lord said unto Hosea, Go take unto thee a wife of whoredoms and children of whoredoms, for the land hath committed great whoredom, departing from the Lord. So he went and took Gomer, the daughter of Diblim, which conceived and bared him a son. And the Lord said unto him, Call his name Jezreel, for yet a little while, and I will avenge the blood of Jezreel upon the house of Jehu, and I will cause to cease the kingdom of the house of Israel. Isn't that what we read in Jeremiah 3 8? God divorced him. And it shall come to pass at that day that I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. And she conceived again and bare a daughter, and God said unto her, Call her name lo Ruhamah, for I will no more have mercy upon the house of Israel, but I will utterly take them away. But I will have mercy upon the house of Judah, and will save them by the Lord their God, and will not save them by bow, nor by sword, nor by battle, by horses, nor by horsemen. But when she had weaned lo Ruhamah, she conceived and bare a son. Then said God, Call his name Lo-Amai, for ye are not my people. 
and I will not be your God. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there it shall be said unto them, Ye are the sons of the living God. So there's going to be a time when the divorced are cast away, but then there's going to be a time, and it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not, ye are not my people, there it shall be said unto them, Ye are the sons of the living God. Then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together and appoint themselves one head, and that's going to be Christ, and they shall come up out of the land, for great shall be the day of Jezreel. All right. Let's see. Go to Hosea chapter 2, and let's see. Verse 21. Hosea chapter 2, verse 21. And it shall come to pass in that day, I will hear, saith the Lord, I will hear the heavens, and they shall hear the earth, and the earth shall hear the corn, and the wine, and the oil, and they shall hear Jezreel. And I will sow her unto me in the earth, and I will have mercy upon her that had not obtained mercy. And I will say to them, which were not my people, Thou art my people, and they shall say, Thou art my God. All right, this is going to be part one. And uh, this is Chaplain Bob, Light of the World Ministries. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God, slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.